Before I start, I would like to thank Alma for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Um, I will talk about another alternative to antibiotic, the use of a nitric oxide releasing solution for the control of bovine respiratory disease in feedlot cattle. As Trevor already mentioned, bovine respiratory disease, or BRD, is the first cause of morbidity and mortality in feedlot cattle. On average, 16.2% of cattle are treated for this condition in feedlots, and 0.8% of cattle placed in feedlot are dying from this condition. This disease costs more than 500 million every year to the beef industry in North America only. Cattle are most affected by BID to the first 50 days after arrival at the feedlots because they are exposed to a wide variety of viruses and bacteria at the time where the immune system is negatively affected by numerous stressors. If you look at the main bacteria that cause BRD, such as Manhamia hemolytica, Pastoral multocida, Histophilus somni, and Mycoplasma bovis, all these bacteria can reside in the upper respiratory tract of cattle as, as common soil. However, under specific conditions, such as var infection or stress, commingling, transportation, etc., those bacteria can explosively proliferate in the upper respiratory tract and then gain access to the lungs. Then, depending on host defenses and virulence factors, these bacteria can explosively proliferate, leading to a bronchopneumonia or a pleuropneumonia. Because of its bacterial components and the fact that BRD occurs mainly during the first 50 days on feed, the control of BRD mainly, re mainly rely relies nowadays on the mass medication with injectable antibiotic. This strategy, also known as metaphylaxis, aims at reducing the number of pathogenic bacteria in the upper respiratory tract and then at preventing their colonization of the lungs. Although very effective at reducing the morbidity and mortality of BRD, most of the time by more than half of the time, so if you have 50% morbidity, you treat those animals on arrival, you will have only 25% of morbidity afterwards. This technique, this control strategy is increasingly seen as an irrational use of antibiotic because it is suspected of promoting the emergence of resistance bacteria, especially by the exposure of the gut flora. As you know, most of resistance of the bacterial resistance emerge from the gut flora. A promising alternative to this mass medication with injectable antibiotic on arrival could be the nasal installation of a nitric oxide releasing solution, also called NORSE, at, at, at or soon after arrival. Nitric oxide is a small molecule endogenously produced by most mammalian cells that has multiple functions. At low concentration, it acts as a cell messenger. However, at high concentration, it, adds, it acts as a broad spectrum antimicrobial agent. Indeed, although nitric oxide is well tolerated by most mammalian cells, it can kill rapidly viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Recently, one of our collaborators in this project, Dr. Miller, developed an acidified neat nitrate solution that contains and releases nitric oxide at an antimicrobial dose, more than 160, uh, 160 per per million. To instill this solution in the nostril can therefore prevent BRD. The exposure, here you've got two graphs, so yes working here. The graph on the left, you can see that after exposure of Manhamia hemolytica serotype A1 to the strip bars or Manhamia hemolytica serotype A6 square bar, for two minutes or five minutes with this solution, you've got a complete eradication. On the right side, I guess, yeah. on the right side, you've got uh, also some proof that this solution can significantly reduce or eradicate important viruses involved in BRD such as BOHV1, also known as IBR, bovine respiratory syncytia virus, BRSV, and parinfluenza 3 virus. You can see that depending on the initial titers and the time of exposure, so here at the control, 10 minutes or one minute of exposure, oh sorry, it's the opposite, one minute or 10 minutes of exposure, you can have a complete eradication of IBR, a significant reduction of BRSV, and a significant reduction of PI3. So, as I said previously, to instill this solution on arrival could prevent BRD. Here we've got a video that will start in two seconds to show that the nasal installation of this solution actually is quite easy and fast. You put the device in the nostril like that, you push on the button, and you've got 
two times 8 milliliters in each nostril, so 32 milliliters plus 8 milliliters on the muscle. The question now is, you know, can uh, there's very interesting result in vitro. The question now is if this solution can really prevent BID in vivo. So to respond to this question, we performed two different large pen trial. A first large pen trial was performed in a feedlot, commercial feedlot close to Strasmore in 2013 with uh, 1,080 animals. And we did afterwards another trial last fall in 2014 on 840 cattle, also in a feedlot close to Blissaker in Alberta. So it is not worthy that I was only uh, involved in the second study. So in the first study that we did, we randomly allocated, actually Dr. Miller and Rajiv Shoshani, which are also part of this team, uh, randomly allocated this uh, 1,080 animal in two groups, and then those cattle received either the nitric oxide raising solution or telmicosine, also known as mycotil, on arrival. Then those animals were, were put in eight pens of 135 animal, of 135 head, and were followed during the first 45 days after arrival, because as Trevor said before, most of the BID case occurred during this period. Let's move to the results. In this study, 3.2% of the cattle in the mycotil or telmicosine group were affected with BRD, whereas 5.2% of the cattle in the nitric oxide raising solution group were affected for, by, with BRD. This 2% difference was lower than the non n margin, which was set at 7.5%. So Dr. Rejev Shoshani and Dr. Miller conclude that this nitric oxide raising solution was actually non-inferior to mycotil to prevent BRD in this population. However, because we had only 3.2% of morbidity in the Timecosin group, which is way below what we would have expected in an iris population, where the morbidity for BRD is more about 15 to 20% for an iris population, they declared or they concluded that actually the population was a low to moderate risk, not an iris population. And as the primary target of metaphylaxis is an iris population of developing BRD, we had to do another trial. That's why we did this trial last fall, 2014, involving 840 AFERS. So same protocol, so we randomly allocated cattle to either nitric oxide raising solution or mycotil on arrival. Then we placed those animals in four pen of 200 to 280 cattle, and we followed them for the first 40 days on feed. We had a 19% morbidity in the mycotil group, which is what we would have expected in the iris population. However, we had a 36% morbidity BRD mobility in the nitric oxide raising solution group, which is way higher than we were expecting. So because of this 17% difference in the mobility rate of BRD between the two categories, we concluded that actually this nitric oxide raising solution was inferior to microtil to prevent BRD. It is interesting to note that also the cattle in the microtil in the nitric oxide raising solution group here in blue, uh, in blue bars on those graphs, were actually uh, getting sick way earlier during the feeding period that the cattle treated with mycotil on arrival. You can see here that the mean day, the median day of first treatment was nine in the nitric oxide raising solution, whereas the median day of treatment in the, um, in the tumicosing group was 18. So those cattle break way later on the feeding period. So in summary, we can say that based on those two studies that this nitric oxide raising solution was non inferior to, make, to mycotil to prevent BRD in low to moderate risk animals. However, it was clearly inferior to mycotil to prevent BRD in high risk cattle. So why was this nitric oxide raising solution did not, why did not prevent BRD as we were expecting? A first reason could be that the product is too short acting actually to really prevent BID in face of a high disease challenge that we find in high risk animals. Another, so another reason could be that the dosage and the timing is not optimal yet. For example, should we increase the dose of the nitric oxide released by this solution? That's the first point. Should we change the timing, for, aging, for example, injecting twice the solution during the first 10 days after arrival? So this is all the question that we like to now answer on the next step on our, on our project, which will be to do probably experimental challenge in collaboration with Vito. So 
Thank you very much for your attention, and I would like to thank um, Alma and Bovico for, the, for their financial support, Vedari Health for their technical support, and also present the member of our team. So Dr. Kripu, who did most of the work in the field, Dr. Doreen from Vedagri Health, Dr. Schaeffer that helped us also in this study, Dr. Trevor Alexander, which is here, and Dr. Miller and Rajiv Shoshani, we developed the drugs. Thank you very much. Thank you.